Hey guys, I'm so excited to finally be sitting down in my new apartment and be able to film a video for you guys. What you can't see, well, except for that box. Hold that thought. What you can't see is all of the boxes that are still unpacked that we just took out of my car today, two weeks after we moved, that are over there. <laughs> It is a little bit echoey in here, so I'm going to have to put some things on the walls. So I'm sorry about that. But today I am bringing you my second video in my Tackling Center series. I know it's been a few weeks since my first one, but hopefully it will be weekly on Wednesdays from here on out. So if you missed my first video in the series, I will have it linked down below. And that was all about getting organized with centers, the things you need to think about before you even decide to start it. So once you've figured all that out, now today we're going to talk about the materials, where you get them, how to create them, what you are going to need for those specific centers. As always, if you have any questions or comments along the way, please feel free to leave them down below and I will either answer them right away or in a future centers video. The first thing I want to talk about is you need to decide if you haven't done so already, what are your centers? My centers are technology, vocabulary, journal, multiplication facts, and a game, okay? So I have five centers. And those five centers stay the same from week to week. The materials I add or include, however, are what either increases or changes. So if you're looking for a way for this to be as easy as possible, you need to find activities that are extremely low prep. Before you even find things, some things you might want to purchase at the Dollar Tree is a few decks of cards, dice, maybe some little containers either to keep your dice in or to keep pieces in. I would also suggest picking up, if you haven't done so already, which would be mind-blowing, <laughs> the mini erasers from the Target dollar spot. And if there aren't any there, just mini erasers, just little things to have as game pieces. And in addition to that, the dry erase sleeves, the clear page protector things, not the ones that go in binders, but the plastic ones that have the colorful borders, those you would want to pick up as well. Once you have those things, you should be pretty much set with the rest of the materials. Now, I am going to suggest something that actually isn't that pricey. One, a printer. I don't know about you guys, I'm just using my hands today. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but my school does not have a color printer that we can print from. So I print all my colored copies on there. And for centers to be exciting, I want them to be in color. So that is my HP printer back there. I have my code down below for a free month or something of instant ink. Yes, I have instant ink. I rarely use my printer, so I have the cheapest one right now. I think I pay $5 a month, but that gives me 50 pages I can print out, which is all I need for centers because I'm not printing materials for every child. I'm just printing a material for one group at a time. And the other thing I would suggest to get, two things actually, a laminator, I believe I got mine from Target for $15, the Scotch brand, and I got the most basic one ever. Um, it comes with like eight laminating pockets to start with, but then I buy the rest when they go on sale on Amazon, the 200 pack for like $10 or something, whatever the sale price is. And then the other thing is a paper cutter. And that was also around like $15, $10 as well. So once you have those things, you will be in the market to create some really great centers. Now, you want to find or create low prep activities that you only have to change out or add to 
weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. You don't want this to be something that you have to change every single center every single day. You are going to lose your mind. And I think that's where people tend to struggle with centers, which I have talked about in my previous video. If you think you need to change these things every single day or have a different type of activity every single day, your centers are going to combust. They're not going to work because you're going to be so overwhelmed and it's just going to be way too difficult and too much work. So this is what I have done to make it as simple as possible. So first of all, let's talk about my extremely low prep, basically no prep center technology. And if you don't have Chromebooks, iPads, Kindles, something in your classroom for kids to go on for technology, I am so sorry. Oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine not having technology in the classroom. Guys, go on Donors Choose, try to get a project funded for your classroom to have technology because it will be a game changer, I promise you. So technology, the program I use is IXL and that was purchased by my school. So if you are looking for a new math program for your school, that's one to suggest. There is also Front Row and that they have a free version and a version that your school could pay for. The thing about IXL is I can track my students' progress and it is K through 12. There's just every single topic you can think of for the grade. They have all the way down from basic area, have a shape and have the sides and have them multiply them to find the area, all the way up to difficult word problems that they can work on. There's different strands of the skill that you can have your kids practice. Now, unfortunately you can't actually assign it for the student and it's not level based. However, for my lower students, I can have them working on one skill, whereas my higher students, I can have them working on those multi-step difficult word problems. Also, I can have them working on a different grade level if I need to, as well as I tell them what to work on and I can go in and check what they have done. So if they're not doing what they're supposed to be, or if I see they're struggling, then I have access to that and I can help them later in the classroom if need be. Also, a great thing about IXL and why I love it as a center is if the kids, if the students get the problem wrong, it gives them a description as to why they got it wrong. Now, does every child use that? No, they come up to me anyway and say, I don't get why this is wrong. But if you teach them to read that and learn from it and grow from it, it is helpful. That is very similar to Front Row. However, Front Row is level-based, so the kids take a pretest and then it has them go from there. And that is the free version. You can do all of that with. Um, Front Row also, if they get it wrong a bunch of times, plays a video or suggests a student that has mastered the skill for them to go ask. So there's different things you could do with that. Other programs I have heard about but haven't used yet, Prodigy, I know that involves a lot of uh, like a battling kind of game and the only way you could battle another person is if you get the problem correct. And Moby Max, I have heard, is also another free one. Prodigy is free as well. And that is very similar to the IXL front row. The only prep you would have to do for this is either get your kids familiar with the program, which is a one deal kind of thing, and you would have to pick the topic you'd want them to work on. So like IXL, I have to go in and see what skills I want them to practice that day and I write those on the board. Front row, I could just say work on your fraction skills and it they log in and they go from there. Also, you'll have to put in all your students' names and give them their account information, but just like teaching them how to use the program, that's something you do when you first introduce it at the beginning of the year or whenever you're planning on starting it. So one center, done. Nothing to print out, all online, it's beautiful. The next thing that is extremely low prep, however, it is the only thing that I change daily besides the technology standard, is my journal station. My journal station, I just named it journal, but it's really like their practice page, worksheet, 
sit down independent work kind of deal because even if you are doing centers you still need that independent work piece that will hold your students accountable now the technology piece is great because i can see where my students are at that holds them accountable and now this journal page whether you have them turn it in, check it with a partner, check it as a class, this is another accountability piece. I know it's going to be hard for some people, but you cannot have an accountability piece for every single center. It would just be too much for you to look at, too much for you to grade. Kids don't have to come up with a product every single place they go. I have these two and it works for me. There's another way I hold my students accountable, which I will explain at the end of this video. So for journal, when you do your weekly planning, weekly PLC, however you guys plan, you must pull a practice page or a worksheet or have a workbook for kids to practice that skill daily. So that's basically done for me when I'm planning with my other with the other fourth grade math teachers so they have to get done with that worksheet now there are several of my students who will get done quickly and the thing about centers is you don't want them to be finished and have nothing to do so for the ones that do finish I have additional tasks that I have them work on that are a bit more challenging a bit more deeper thinking and I'm not going to talk about how I store anything yet. That's going to be a future video, but they know where to go. They pull the task, they cut it out, they glue it in their math journal, AKA why I call it journal, and they work through that. If they're done with that, they move on to the next one and they can just keep going. I get those tasks from Howard County Public Schools. If you search HCPS, -H or Howard County Public Schools, just search that in Google and your grade and math and all of their amazing information comes up. I've talked about them before. They just have a really organized standard-based curriculum website thing that has these tasks, open-ended tasks on them and different games, different center ideas, just a bunch of different stuff. So search Howard County Public Schools and I believe that is Maryland based. I'm not sure, but it's amazing. And you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to check it out. So I talked about how I pull the practice pages when I'm planning with my team members. And then those tasks, I spend maybe like one weekend printing out a bunch of them and just storing them where I store them. And the kids know if they've already done one, they just go to the next one. Um, so that you may need to add more monthly. Um, it just depends how fast your kids work and how hard the tasks are. Then I have math facts and I call it math facts because my kids practice both multiplication and division. And if you're in a lower grade, they can do their addition and subtraction here. So currently this year, I just have two games that my kids are playing right now. They are playing the dot game, which you probably have seen on kids menus before. And they get to roll a die to find out what math fact they're practicing. And then the boxes actually have the answers. So they just draw a line where their answer is. And if they close the box with their partner, whoever closes it first, they get a point, you know, different games like that. I found all of my math fact games on Pinterest. There are a ton of free ones, but I have also purchased some larger packs of the free versions as well. And the one Teachers Pay Teachers author that I have purchased these from is Games for Gains and my kids love these games and my original goal was to change not take any away but add a new game weekly but I did not get around to that but it's been fine because they love competing against their partner and they have different facts to practice every day so it kind of changes it up based on what they're practicing and they've never complained that they love this station so it's actually a lot more low prep than I initially 
thought it would be. This is where you can bring in cards and dominoes. I didn't mention dominoes, but if you have dominoes, different things like that where the kids can practice their facts with. They could play multiplication war, comparing numbers, different things that are literally low prep and really fun. You want these centers to be fun. You don't want them all to be a challenge and just such a task that they have to really get frustrated over. You want them to enjoy coming to school. So centers is a way to make math more exciting, which is why I'm such a big proponent, I think is the word, of centers. Now, I recently saw an Instagram post from Lucky Little Learners and she wrote a whole blog post on how she uses board games that kids are familiar with for them to practice their math facts. So I have not read the blog post yet, but I will link it down below. And I think this is something I'm going to do next year. Have board games, like really simple board games like Candyland, Shoots and Ladders, Sorry, Trouble, different things like that where the kids play the game, but along the way, if they pick up a card or if they roll the dice, they have to do the math fact that goes with that. That way they're practicing while they get to have some fun. And that's even more low prep actually because the game is already created for you. And I think that spices things up and changes it up and makes it so much more exciting. My next center is my vocabulary center and I actually came up on the up with this just randomly on my own because I was in a reading centers training. So vocabulary is also extremely important in math because if the kids don't know the vocabulary, they won't be able to solve the word problems because they don't won't know exactly what the words mean. And I have a lot of ESL students this year. Learning the vocabulary and seeing it constantly and practicing it is also very important for them. So what I have done with this is every time we complete a unit, I create a set of those words with the definitions and I cut them up into little cards. This is where my printing and laminating comes in handy. And I keep them together as a set and this center is also extremely low prep and I don't have to think about it from day to day. I don't have to explain anything new because the kids choose a set of cards and then the first thing I have them do is match the word with the definition and I keep a little answer key in it so they could check along the way. Once they've done that, they see what words they're working with and they flip them all over and they get to play memory match. Flip over a word, flip over a definition see if they go together. Once they've done that, then they can use the words to just play headbands. So one kid holds a word while I have headbands that they could put on, some of them don't like them, whatever. Hold a word to your head and the other students give them clues, either the definition or type of problem it would be in, and they have to try to guess the word. So they do the same exact things with the words, but they're just with different words daily, weekly, simple, simple. And they love that they get to play headbands and they're practicing vocabulary. It's great. So like I mentioned before, I only, I don't take any cards out. Now you could, if you felt that your kids really understood them and it was an easy deck and you didn't want them to play anymore with those words, you want them to practice different words. It may be one that they're gravitating towards all the time, but Obviously that's up to you and your kids and your classroom. I just add a new set of cards every time we complete a unit, an entire unit. That way it's more of a spiral review. And then finally, game. This one is probably the one that is the most prep, even though it's not really anything at all, it's just, taking the time to create a new one each time it's time for me to do it. So just like vocabulary, every time we finish a unit, I want to have a game on that unit. Now, I've only used games from one teacher's pay teacher seller. I bought the whole pack, the whole bundle for all of the fourth grade standards last summer. 
and that's all I've used and it's been perfect and it's been great and it's just worked. So Blair Turner, I purchased the fourth grade centers bundle and she just has created board games for each standard. Now, some of them are not board games, some of them are task cards. So I pick and choose, but I have at least six different ones right now and the kids love them. So this is where your Expo markers, laminating, printing comes in to play. Now I know there are so many other Teachers Pay Teachers authors that have created different games that your students can play. So look around because you will be amazed at how low prep and how engaging these activities are that with just a little bit of searching and researching, you can find some great things for your kids to do during center time. So since I'm in fourth grade, I never actually introduced these games to my students. I gave them the responsibility to read the directions and play because if you think about it, like at recess, I have weird board games that I don't even know what they are and the kids have figured out how to play them on their own or they create their own way, like whatever. It's a board game, they have the materials. This is where the little mini erasers come into play as well because those is what they that is what they use as their game pieces. And whether they figure it out and play it exactly correct or just practice the math skills along the way, like, I don't care. As long as they are practicing the math in some way, it's fine. So a suggestion I have for the younger grades is maybe have a day where you play this game as a class first and then say, okay, now it's going to be in the center's folder for you to go and get to play whenever you're at that center. That's really the only other way I could think to introduce it because I would not want to take up a day where you're trying to do centers and introducing the game at the same time. So that's something you're going to have to take into consideration if you have younger kids or your students are not able to read and follow the directions on their own. But I will show you right now, these games are like a board game and they either involve dice or a spinner. So I have bought spinners for the kids to lay down. If you don't have spinners, use a paper clip and they can spin that to find what they move to. Some of them involve cards. Um, but a lot of them have answer sheets where they could show their work, work through the problem, and write their answer. And then they also have answer keys so the other partner can have them check their work. Now it's up to you whether they have that in there or not. I want them to be able to hold themselves accountable. So maybe make a trusting student in charge of the answer key so that they can check their answers while they go through the game. I hope this all made sense and was helpful was helpful for you guys if you're wondering because a lot of people have been wondering how do you hold your students accountable for your vocabulary your multiplication facts and your game section centers well when we come together as a class at the end i pull sticks for um, who I'm going to call on or press random on dojo and they have to tell me something they practice in centers and they can't just say oh I played headbands well that doesn't tell me what you learned about math I say then I continue the questioning and I say well what words did you practice and if they don't if they can't tell me what they did then Either you can take a dojo point or do some whatever your behavior management system is to show them that they need to be responsible for their learning at this time. And if they're not participating and they're not able to answer those questions at the end of class, then you need to handle that how you need to handle that. Like I said, depends on your kids, depends on how you run your classroom. It's gonna work for most of the kids, it's not going to work for some of them. However, I have journal every single day and they that is a must, they have to get that done. So if there's a few kids who are slacking off and not really accomplishing anything in their other two centers for that day, 
what am I gonna do about it? Like, it's the same thing as if you had them just doing independent work and they get through their independent work or stop working halfway through. You're just going to have those kids no matter how you run your math classroom. So it's either something you can handle and find a way to deal with and motivate that student or it's going to be just like a lost cause. That's up to you. Now, I also hold my students accountable by walking around the classroom. If you notice and if you watch my previous video, I am not a center. So I pull kids at times, but I also walk around and monitor. So I'm not a center, that way I can, I can walk around and monitor. And if you have kids goofing off, try to group your kids where they're with another student who's going to make sure that they're getting their work done. Or if you know there's a few kids who can't do centers, have them with you the whole time to make sure they're getting things done and getting some work done. Or something that I also read when I was reading a bunch of blog posts when I first wanted to start centers last summer was scare them and if a kid is goofing off, have a packet of work ready for them to work on, send them to their seat and complete the packet of work. If that doesn't work, send them to the office to complete the work. If that doesn't work, then they'll just have to keep doing their packet of work every day. Centers is a privilege, you know? You have to have your tricks up your sleeve to be able to manage your classroom, but that comes into a whole classroom management deal. So. I believe that is all I have to say today. If you have any other questions about materials for centers, please leave them down below. If you have any really amazing uh, materials that you use, please leave your suggestions down below as well. As always, if there's any other questions, leave them down below. If you are new to my channel and haven't subscribed, already please do so i make weekly vlogs as well as these centers videos right now if you want to catch me after school or on the weekends go follow my instagram that's also always linked down below i've been adding to my story a lot more so if you want to see more into my personal life or like i said just after school and weekends follow me there because I've been updating that a lot more. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and share it so it could reach other teachers. And I will see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching.